Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Jennifer Huber, also known as Solo Travel Girl. And since June of 2022, coming up on two years, I've been using Manjaro to manage my type two diabetes. Before I get into this week's update, I just wanna remind you that I am not a healthcare professional and I'm just sharing my personal experience and opinion about using Manjaro to manage my type two diabetes. Also, I have no relationship with the drug manufacturer and I have no relationship with any pharmacy dispensing Manjaro. You might be able to hear my dog playing with his treats. He's such a good boy. That's Radcliffe. I don't know if he's going to make an appearance today. But before I get into this week's update, which is week 103 on Manjaro, I just want to briefly tell you how much of a um, miracle medication uh, Manjaro has been in my life. Maybe Miracle is pushing it too much, but really it has helped me achieve my health goals in being a better version of myself. Now, what you can see is that I've lost about 60 pounds since being on Manjaro, but most importantly, it has lowered my A1C. When I was first prescribed Manjaro, I had an A1C of 8.2. At last check, which was about six months ago, it was the end of January, it was 5.6. I had high blood pressure and I was on high blood pressure medication. Since being on Monjaro, I no longer am on high blood pressure medication because I no longer have high blood pressure. I had non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and that has since been reversed. I'll put a link to a video about that. And then cholesterol, I have high cholesterol for a diabetic. I am on a statin as well. I'm on five milligrams of a statin. However, my numbers are improving and I'll have a link to those numbers as well. So yeah, Manjaro with the modifications I've also made in my life paired with Manjaro really has made a big improvement in my life. And I'm feeling fine as frog hair. All right, let's get into this week's update. I do have my laptop here so I don't forget anything because I, I kind of tend to do that. So first off, I am in my mermaid era. If you've been following along, you know I went to mermaid camp at Wikiwachi, the Sirens of the Deep uh, mermaid camp, and it was amazing. I did that begin beginning of June. I've been working on a blog post, which will probably be posted to um, Microsoft Start. And I'm working on a video as well. So I am just totally feeling like a mermaid today. As you can see, this pillow, this uh, actually the pillowcase was one of the gifts they gave us for participating. And it does say Sirens of the Deep, Friends of Wikiwachi State Park. Um, the Friends of Wikiwachi State Park, they are the nonprofit who uh, put the camp together. And I just felt like getting my hair, put some hair chalk in, and this will wash out tomorrow before I go to work. But I just thought I would have fun today. And I realized mermaid colors really match Manjaro. Don't you agree? All right, let's get into this week's update. So wait, I gained two pounds this week. So I'm back up to 138 pounds. So I can say I've lost about 60 pounds since being on Manjaro. I guess technically I can say I've lost over 60 pounds. I've just happened to gain a few of those pounds back, but that's okay. I'm a-okay with it. Glucose. I did take some glucose numbers and let's see what's the easiest. I will put those numbers here. As you can see, they started off low 100 and then in the 90s. Those are non-fasting glucose numbers. Nutrition, I'm being mindful, making my yogurt. I made a batch of yogurt last night and I've been pairing it with the frozen berries that I stashed away in my freezer. I'm actually on my last batch of frozen strawberries and that'll be it. Then I'm gonna have to go buy my blueberries and strawberries and what other berries I put into my yogurt. I do also put some local honey in there as well, which is good for allergies. And I know this is gonna be weird, but I've just been having this weird hankering craving for tomato mayo sandwiches the last week. I read an article, in, I think it was in Southern Living Magazine, about like 10 ways to have a <laughs> tomato mayonnaise sandwich. I would think there's just one way, but I've got some kind of um, 
seed bread from Aldi, thin sliced, and I'm just slathering on the mayo and then tomato and then sprinkling on Everglades seasoning. So that's pretty much been my lunch all week. Uh, yeah, that's probably not the best thing for me to eat, but it, it, it's a vegetable, right? Um, and this the seed bread it really isn't bad. It's only two thin slices as well. So, and I did grill up some chicken this week, so I had... Um, Actually, I grilled it up yesterday, so I had some last night, and then I had some today. But again, I'm trying to be mindful of what I'm um, intaking. So perhaps those tomato sandwiches are why I've gained two pounds this week. Exercise, walking my dog twice a day. Although if you've been watching the national news, Southwest Florida, we got a lot of rain, like what, 10 to 12 inches in Sarasota. There was flooding. I had to drive down to, where did I have to go this week? I went down to LaBelle, Florida. It was raining a little bit, but the day I drove down to Naples, holy smokes, there was just tons of rain and whiteout conditions on I-75. It's 70 miles an hour, and it was there was some standstill traffic just because people couldn't see, but I just kept on going. But maybe 35 miles an hour at some point, I was going that slow. But there was a lot of rain. My point in telling you this is that even though it did rain, there's a little bit of flooding going on, I still managed to take Radcliffe out twice a day. I did get some lawn work done yesterday, and then I did break out the Pilates. As you can see, I got my Pilates bar um, over here, which I picked up at Hot Bins several months ago, and I think I got it for... 10 or 12 dollars really didn't know how to how to use it and i watched a video today and not that i was using it incorrectly before but i got some great tips and a nice workout this morning it was only a 15 minute workout it's a five day program so i'm gonna do day number two tomorrow and this week on june 20th for the summer solstice out on Englewood Beach, there's going to be an evening yoga. I guess it coincides with sunset and the summer solstice. So I'm looking forward to that. Hoping it doesn't rain. Let's see what time is it. Uh, about It's quarter to eight right now recording this. And around 7.15, there was like this downpour of rain. So hopefully Thursday, we want to be experiencing that rain. And I just want to add about the rain. I'm so grateful for the rain because it has been so hot and so dry. And we've really needed this rain here in Southwest Florida and Florida as a whole. All right. We talked about nutrition, exercise, weight, glucose. And I guess that's pretty much it. Other than I just want to let you know that I placed my order for Manjaro last Sunday. That was the first available time. That I can pick it up and as you know there is a limited availability on certain dosages I'm on the 7.5 milligram dose did I mention it's week 43 at 7.5 and I placed the order on Sunday and it was ready on Tuesday I was shocked I was very shocked and it cost me $150 to pick that up um, for three months worth of Manjaro and I'm not going to complain about paying $150. I know it wasn't $25, but $150, that's A-OK -okay in my book. I have my health savings plan, and I've been putting money into it. However, I've had to make uh, some large deposits, and I didn't talk about... I had another health episode a few weeks ago, and I didn't mention that. Maybe I'll mention that, that now. However, um, so yeah, I was just really surprised because there is limited availability of the 7.5 milligram dose. I just checked the Manjaro website, and indeed, there is still a uh, limited availability of uh, this dosage. So I'm grateful that my pharmacy, CVS, was able to supply it. But this other health issue that I had, and I didn't, didn't bring it up because it, it wasn't an issue. It kind of became an issue. Basically, I went to have my, my annual mammogram, and when they asked the questions, is there a new lump? Is there new pain? And at the time, yeah, I had felt a lump, a new lump, and I had pain, but I wasn't sweating it. I had a biopsy. The first time I ever had a mammogram, I there was a lump that was found, and they ended up having to do a biopsy, and it became, it was benign. But I had to have, after that, I think for like two years, I had to have a mammogram every six months, and then basically in the, the clear. However, the process from when the lump was found to when I had the um, the biopsy, it was like several months. 
had gone by. So when I went in to have my mammogram, I was truthful in that and they said they would not and could not give me a mammogram. They said that I need to have a special mammogram and I needed to have an ultrasound and have the doctor read the results right away and I would have to come back for that. So I'm like, okay, I'm starting to get a little freaked out. And so I think I was supposed to have my mammogram on a Thursday and they scheduled this other testing for the following Tuesday. Well, I got into my car, drove away, and they called me and they said that they had an opening for the next day, which was a Friday, and they asked me to come in. I said, okay. Now, I didn't ask how my insurance was going to feel about this or how they would react because I'm just thinking, well, this must be the protocol and everything. And plus, mammograms are supposed to be covered under our insurance. So I went in, had the right before I went in I panicked and I recorded a video but I deleted it and I was I was scared at that point I was okay until I got to the office I'm sitting in the parking lot and I was just like super nervous and thinking all oh, worst case scenarios and everything so I went in tried to hold it together had the special mammogram and then they told me to go wait in this other room I went and waited in this room it was supposed to be private and they had a door but the door kept on swinging open now I'm, I'm fully clothed in this room by the way and I just thought it was kind of comical that they're trying to keep it private yet their door just wouldn't stay shut and all these other people are going back and forth anyway so then they called me to go have the um, ultrasound and in the meanwhile the technician told me that everything was looking good so far so that gave me a big uh, sigh of relief so then I went in to have the ultrasound and having that all done and um, then I had to go sit and or I sat and wait in the same place put my clothes my top back on and then the doctor came in this man that I never met before and he's very official and very stoic and I was just thinking oh my gosh he's gonna tell me that it, it's cancer or something horrible and that it's spread and yada 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 and again I'm just thinking worst case scenario but he told me there was nothing of concern there, nothing to worry about, and I, that was just a huge relief. And then eventually the pain has gone away. He said there's just various reasons as to why it could be pain. I kind of wonder if it's my purse because my purse is huge, and I've a friend of mine gave me a um, uh, a smaller bag for my birthday, so I've been using that. So I don't know if it's what whatever it is, but I've been feeling much better in that in that area. So then I got the bill this week and it was I think over $700 that I need to pay. So insurance paid some of it, but I have to pay 700 some dollars. My point being I'm okay because I have my health savings account and even though I'm paying for my Manjaro out of that at $150 copay and then this $700 for my special mammogram ultrasound yeah the healthcare industry it's something else right anyway anywho that's all i have to say this week other than i just want to share a couple photos with you um in my facebook memories this photo came up of me from nine years ago it was after one of the most amazing experiences that i ever had i won uh, an auction item to take a a canoe an overnight canoe trip on the buffalo river in arkansas and it was with uh, a writers or an outdoor writers association that I used to be a member of and I took a friend that I used to work in Yellowstone with because he lives in Arkansas and it was just a blast and our host Glenn and, and his family were just so gracious and it was the ultimate experience but anyway this is a picture that I took uh, the night after we got back and I took a shower just refreshed and everything and rejuvenated and I I was probably 180s, 190s in this photo, size 16. I still have that top. I still have the shorts. I don't wear the shorts. I don't wear the top. Although I love that that shirt. And then this is a photo of me before. Hey, Red. Before I started my my first day at Mermaid Camp. So this is me. And then I do also want to show you some a couple photos from mermaid camp this is one of the photos that we took on dry land before getting into the water and then actually i'll show you a little clip of me in the water 
So stay tuned for a longer version talking about my mermaid camp, maid camp experience. And I kind of wonder if I would have done mermaid camp if I had not felt better about myself, so to say. I kind of think I would, but I probably wouldn't be sharing these images with you. Um, it was just a great experience. And, you know, before this whole Manjaro journey, I was adventurous. I was adventurous and yeah, I would not never wear a bikini like I am in that other photo, but, or tank top and whatever. I don't know if you can call that bikini. I put it together, but, um, yeah, I just kind of wonder if I would have done it. I did try and register for mermaid camp last year, but I wasn't quick enough to get in and yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I, I would have done it if I haven't made it this this far in my health journey. I don't know. Anyway, it was a great experience. And if you, if you have the opportunity, I hope you check it out. It's fun. I'm kind of contemplating going back next year, but at the same time, I'm conflicted because I want other people to have the same experience. And they only allow eight campers in per, per camp. And I think they only offer maybe five or six a year. So anyway, my friends, I hope you're having success with Manjaro. My Manjaro anniversary is coming up. What? Two years on Manjaro. So we'll see what I do for next week. But anyway, thank you so much for following along. And just don't compare your journey to my journey because my journey is going to look different than yours. Your journey is going to look different from someone else's. My journey is going to look different from someone else's. But I just hope you do what's right for you. And I hope you're having success. All right, I'll catch you next week. And remember, not only be kind to others, but please be kind to yourself. Bye.